Hey everybody, looks like you got a test coming up on hypothesis testing in one sample. So you'll find out in the next chapter it's hypothesis testing and guess what? It's with two samples, so it's pretty much the same stuff. So anyways, um, uh, this should be uh, questions that are similar to your upcoming test. Okay, so here we go. An analyst claims that the mean annual salary for advertising account executives in Sacramento, California is more than the national mean of $67,800. So below are the annual salaries in dollars for a random sample of 21 advertising account executives in Sacramento. Okay, now this part's the important part right here because this is less than 30. So right here it says assume the population is normally distributed. So we can go ahead and do a, a, a let's see, a, a z-score on this, okay? So because it tells us that the population standard deviation is $7,800. So if we didn't do that, we'd do a T-score, and that's coming up, you guys. All right, so assume the population is normally distributed and the population standard deviation is $7,800. So at, um, at the 9% level or at the 0 .09 level, is there enough evidence to support the analyst claim? Okay, so if we can get a, a Z-score that gives us a P-value that's less than 9%, then we can say that, okay? All right, so um, now your calculators can do all of this with ease, but on the test, you're going to have to show your work, show the formula, show you plugging it in. You can still use your calculators, and you can use your calculators to check your answer, but but you're going to need to do this. So I'll go ahead and pause it. So somewhere down here, there's a pause feature, and put all of that into your calculator, okay? You need to do that. Get going. All right, so hopefully you have it all plugged in, okay? And so you can get your mean, do a one variable stat to get your mean, okay? All right, so identify the claim and the and the null and alternative hypotheses, okay? All right, so is there enough evidence to support the analyst claim? So here's the analyst claim that the mean annual salary for advertising is more than the national mean. So that would be more than, so that would be the alternative, okay? So uh, the claim is uh, the mean annual salary for advertising is more than uh, the 67,800. So, so remember, the null is always has the equals involved in it. So this would be less than or equal to, and here's our claim right here. So we want to get a, a probability value with this right here to see if it's going to work. Okay, so let's find the standardized test uh, statistic. Okay, on your test, it's going to ask you to state that formula. So for your z-score formula, because they gave us the population standard deviation, you're going to need the mean. Okay, and so the population mean is, is this right here, 67,800. So we're going to do this minus this divided by, uh, what was it, oh, 7,800. And then the square root of, uh, I forgot what the square root of n was, let's see, so uh, uh, 21. Okay, so we're going to plug that in. Okay, so here we go. So we plug that in and we get about 0 0.06. Okay, that is our z score. So let's go ahead and find the p-value. Draw, always draw the standard normal curve. Okay, here's the z score 0, here's z score 1, 2, 3. Here's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So make three standard deviations on the left and the right. And then represent your standard deviation right there. And we want the more than, so it is this side over here. Okay, well, we know that this is 50% or 0 0.50. So this is going to be a little bit more than that because uh, this side is going to be this. But we want this side, so it's it's going to be 1 minus that, okay? So looking in, the, in our standard normal uh, table, in our, my textbook, it's page A16 and A17, uh, we find uh, with the z-score of 0 0.06, we find the area under the curve to the left of that is uh, 0.5239, so our probability is going to be 1 minus that, or 0.4761. Okay, so, so can we reject it or fail to reject it? Well, we're going to fail to reject it because it's greater than 9%, okay? So let's go ahead and interpret our decision in the context of the problem. So remember the claim is that the mean annual salary for advertising in SAC is more than na the national mean. So uh, there's not enough evidence uh, at the 9% level, heck, at the 50% level even. Um, well, no, at the 50% level there is, but at the 45% level there's not. But typically it's 10% or 5% or 1%. This one's kind of weird, but it's 9%. But... Um, uh, there's not enough evidence at the 9% level of significance to support the claim 
that the mean annual salary for advertising execs in Sacramento is more than the national mean of 67,800. Make sure you state that in the context of the problem, okay? All right, so your conditions for a z-test, okay? And the z-test is because our standard deviation is known. The population standard deviation is known, okay? So the conditions are the sample has to be random, and at least one of the following is true. Do you remember the one of the following? One of them is that uh, either it states that the population is normally distributed or um, your sample size is greater than or equal to 30, okay? All right, conditions for the conditions, sorry, for a z-test for proportions, okay? So z-test uh, uh, means that all the above is true. All of this stuff is true right here. And then uh, your population proportions are a binomial distribution, so it's always a percentage. So um, NP is greater than or equal to 5, and at the same time NQ is greater than or equal to 5. All right, let's try this. Excuse me, I'm coming down with a cold. So a humane society claims that uh, less than 35% of the U.S. Uh, households have, uh, own a dog. Well, that's a shame. <laughs> I have four dogs. Sometimes you hear them barking in the background. Just got one the other, about two months ago. It was at my front door uh, at my classroom at 6.15 in the morning. 6.45, sorry, in the morning. She was shivering and skinny. And anyway, so she's our new dog, Lucy. Anyway, so in a random sample of 400 U.S. adult households, 156 said they had uh, they they own a dog. So test the claim from the Humane Society that dog owners is less than the national average. Okay, so um, this is a proportion one because of the percentage right here. So NP 400 times 0.35 and then NQ 400 times 0.65. They're both greater than or equal to five. So we can go ahead and do our z-score distribution. Okay, so to get our z-score, we need to get our our p hat our p hat is how many own a dog over the the sample size right there okay so here we go there's our z score formula that you have to know for the test uh, p hat minus p divided by the square root of pq all over n okay it's very familiar okay so plugging those in we get 0.39 minus the 0.35 Here's P, here's Q divided by 400. Make sure you can get this in your in your calculator. And you get 1.68. So what does that mean, you guys? So the claim is, now, we probably could have put this before this part right here. Or right here. This is great. The claim is less than 35% of U.S. households own a dog. So our null is uh, greater than or equal to 0.35. And our alternative, which is our claim, is less than 0.35. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, find um, uh, what this uh, 1.68 means. Okay, so there's our z-score table. So it's way over here. Remember, the, the standard normal curve typically has 0, 1, 2, 3 on the left, on the right, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 on the left. So 1.68 is right there. Remember, this is 50%, so this is going to add some more. So when you look up 1.68, we get that that p-value is 95 0.35% or 0.9535. So we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So always interpret it in the context of the problem. There's not enough evidence at any level of significance to support the claim that less than 35% of U.S. households own a dog. And that's a good thing. You guys, um, dogs are they're just lifesavers. Anyway. So if the population standard deviation is not known, use the same conditions as the z-score, but instead you're going to use a t-score distribution, okay, with your degrees of freedom uh, equal to n minus 1. That should say n minus 1. And then here's our, our formula right here. So it's going to be the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the s is the sample standard deviation over the square root of n. Now your calculator can do this, but you're going to have to show this on the on the test. You're going to have to know those formulas. So here we go. And an industrial company claims that the mean pH level of water in a nearby river is 6.8. So we randomly select 19 water samples and measure the pH of each uh, 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 sample. Um, and the sample mean and standard deviation, so that's sample, sta sample mean and sample standard deviation, are 6.7 and, and 0.24 respectively. Is there enough evidence to reject the company's claim uh, at the 5% level? So that should say at uh, the, um, uh, alpha equals 5%. Okay, there should be an equal sign right there. Assume the population is 
normally distributed. Maybe I can insert that in there while I'm doing stuff here. So equals. There we go. Alrighty. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, copy and paste that as I'm doing that. Okay. So here we go. So uh, the claim is the mean pH level is is, is means equals 6.8. So the null and the alternative hypotheses are uh, the the null is um, it equals 6.8. That's what we're claiming. And the alternative is it doesn't equal. So this is a two-tailed, you guys. So the population is normal because it says it's normal up there. Right, where does it say? Right here. Okay, so we can go ahead and proceed because this is less than 30. So we've got to have this in there. And you have to state that. The population is normal. Okay, so we can proceed with the t-test um, uh, because uh, the 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 population standard deviation is unknown. That's why we're doing a t-test right here, okay? So the degrees of freedom are always n minus 1, so here it's 19 minus 1, or 18. Okay, so this gives a two, um, uh, the two critical values. So let's go ahead and look up. Um, I'm opening up my book, you guys, so um, to page, uh, I think it's A18 in my book, and I'm going down to my degrees of freedom of 18 right here. And then we're doing um, uh, a theta of 0 0.05. So if you go to 18 and 0 0.05, I say 2.101. Okay, so since it's a two-tail, uh, it's going to be negative 2.101 and positive 2.101. Okay, all right. So uh, let's go ahead and um, do our, our T statistics. Okay, so our rejection regions are if we get a T value that's less than negative 2.101 or greater than um, uh, 2.101. When we get our t uh, distributions, then we can we can uh, reject uh, the null hypothesis. So here's our t score. So the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the sample standard deviation over the square root of the sample size, which is 19 in this case. Okay. So here we go. We just plug that in, and we get about. Make sure you can get that in your calculator. About negative 1.8. 816. Is that less than that right there? No, it's not. Let's slide that up. So the graph shows the locations of the rejection regions. Always draw the graphs uh, and the standardized uh, test statistics. And because here's uh, our T score for the rejection region, negative 2.101. Here's positive 2.101. Here's our T score. It's, uh, it's not in the rejection region, so we're going to fail to reject the null hypotheses. Always interpret that. So there's not enough evidence at the 5% level of significance to reject the claim that the mean pH is 6.8. So we can't reject it. doesn't mean it's true, just there's not enough evidence to reject it. All right, you might see something like this. What would the Z value be if we wanted to do a two-tail test with um, 0 0.08? So draw the picture. Here's a two-tailed test, so 0 0.08. So that means 4% over there, 4% over there. So we can either look up 0 0.04, or in this case, this would be 0.96. But they're both the same. There's just this one's negative, this one's positive. So I'm going to look up the 0 0.04 on the negative column, and I get negative 1.75, which means this is positive 1.75. So anyways, that would be our Z scores uh, statistics right there, okay? All right, if you guys are in my class, that would be your assignment. Take care.